Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the Academy of Model Aeronautics responds to proposed SUAS regulations. A great airshow performer has gone west, and complaints about noise are a problem for Super Dave Matheson. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. The Academy of Model Aeronautics has published its response to the FAA's Notice of Proposed Rulemaking regarding the regulation of small unmanned aerial systems, also known as SUAS. The AMA website leads into their response with the following statement, quote, the Academy believes that the FAA must address and adjudicate the 33,000 plus comments to its interpretation of the special rule for model aircraft and resolve the issues and concerns presented before moving forward and finalizing the small UAS rule, end quote. The AMA's well-crafted comments are extensive, well-written, and well-intended. As a result, the document is nine pages long. The AMA says they view the proposed SUAS regulations as a first positive step but they express concern over the details of the proposed regulation. It's difficult to summarize the AMA's extensive document, but it's fair to say their largest concern is driven by the proposed regulatory concept of anything that flies is defined as an aircraft and therefore is subject to all existing aviation regulations. The AMA points to model aviation's long history of successful coexistence with full-scale aircraft operation. Their response makes detailed recommendations for regulating UAS operations without imposing unneeded restrictions on model aircraft hobbyists and the industry that supports them. Wing walking is one of the earliest forms of aerial death-defying acts, and ANN has learned of the passing of Air Show Hall of Famer Johnny Kazian, who is known as the greatest wing walker of all time. Kazian performed with such air show legends as Joe Hughes, Jim Franklin, and Dave Dacey. He retired at age 63 following the 1996 air show season and was inducted into the Air Show Hall of Fame in 2004. In the bio posted on the Hall of Fame website, KZN is described as the consummate airshow business professional who lived for the crowd and played for the camera and audience in a way that impressed everyone. It's reported that KZN passed away at his home in Kuna, Idaho, near Boise, on April 23rd at the age of 81. After the break, Practicing for an air show is ruled out because of noise. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The loud roar of the engine during an aerobatic airplane performance can be exciting, but for airshow performer Dave Matheson, that roar has turned out to be a problem. Transport Canada has notified Matheson, known around the circuit as Super Dave Matheson, that he can no longer practice airshow routines near his home airport 
of Chilliwack, British Columbia, below 2,000 feet, citing proximity to noise-sensitive or livestock areas. It's reported that Super Dave has obtained permission from the Chilliwack Airport to practice his routines over land owned by them. But then came a letter from the Civil Aviation Department rescinding his approval to fly below 2,000 feet. The report says that airport officials support Super Dave, but that they were not invited to the discussion of the noise complaints. Matheson said he moved his family to the area three years ago, but now he says he may have to move again. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, it's fun to look back and enjoy the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. We're very excited about being able to introduce the van series. Uh, we're starting with the RV7 and RV9. The BRS company is renowned for its airplane-mounted parachute systems. In this video, you'll get details about how BRS developed recovery systems for the van's RV7 and RV9 kit-built airplanes. Search BRS Parachute Upgrade on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, an airline cleaner is accused of stealing. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons, easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we summarize some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. An airplane cleaning employee of Atlanta-based AirServe has been charged with grand larceny for stealing over $15,000 of various airline and passenger items. Items stolen include multiple iPads and Kindle devices, laptop computers, and 1,500 bottles of airline liquor. Auburn University has received the nation's first FAA approval to operate a new unmanned aircraft system flight school as part of the Auburn University Aviation Center. They'll conduct commercial flight training for operators of unmanned aircraft systems. The Uber blog may have been intended for automotive sightseeing trips, but now it's being tried in Shanghai for helicopter service. Kai Jets is offering a half-hour trip abroad an EC-135 helicopter for about $484, including door-to-door -door service with refreshments. It's reported that the Swiss Postal Service has received approval to start testing drones for mail delivery. The drone company Matternet is developing a delivery drone for packages up to 2.2 pounds with a total distance of up to 12 miles. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. The four-motor electrically powered Solar Impulse 2 landed successfully in Nanjing, China last week, following a 20-day stay in Chongqing. Its mission is to make the first around-the-world flight without fuel. Bertrand Picard indicated his job as a pilot was relatively easy. It's the preparatory measures that have proved challenging for the team of weather specialists and engineers from Solar Impulse 2 partner Altran at the Monaco Control Center. 
The next part of the circumnavigation will require flying five consecutive days and nights in the solar-powered aircraft to cross the Pacific Ocean, a feat that has never been accomplished before. In the coming months, Mr. Picard and Mr. Borschberg will continue their expedition around the globe. Given the low speed of the very light aircraft, the round the world mission will demand over 500 flight hours, which is nearly three weeks in the air, spread over five months, and covering roughly 22,000 miles. Well, that's our program for Wednesday, April 29th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And over the next two days, we'll fill you in on some news that affects Airborne Unlimited in a big way, as a few changes will be made in who and how we bring you Airborne Unlimited, the aviation world's daily news program brought to you proudly by the Aero News Network. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, so please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.